Yeah, it's fucking mega. Fuck's sake, bro. Loads of mic. Danny, how, how was your mic? How the fuck did that so even happen? Low? How was your that mic was li- so low? That was, right, look at this setup. Look at this. <laughs> I'm glad this is recorded. Oh, fucking great. So is that what you do? Is it? Hang on. <laughs> I don't fucking know what I've done. How many gigs have you played, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> Well, have you, you ever watched this? Have you not noticed that every gig this happens to me? Every gig we've ever done, my microphone stand dies, everything collapses, and everything goes wrong. Put it at like a right angle, like that bad boy. I don't know what I've done. How I've made it. Oh, my days. Do you know what I've made it? Oh, here we go. Look at this. All right, I'm on. I'm pro as fuck. Man. This happens to every fucking pizza trump gig. This I, I cannot fucking cope with microphones. Like, use, like, use your day off tomorrow to l- learn how to... <laughs> yeah, I've got like four of them here and I can't use any of them. <laughs> that was proper mad. That was just sat still and then just fired into your face. Yeah, as well. well, this like one, it don't, I, don't, I think I've done it at that type by there. It's because I was trying to record acoustic guitar with it for that fucking Bob, Bob Marley thing. And now I can't undo it. I've tightened it too much. I haven't got the strength to undo it again. <laughs> like, just stay in there now. Stay that way. Oh, fuck it. I'll do. This episode is going to be chaos. Andy, do no, I'm all right. Us- I'm sober and I'm with it today. I'm just a bit tired. I'm all right. Welcome to episode six of Cheat Cans, Broken Vans and Basement Bar Bands, the TNS podcast where we go through all our releases, tell you why you should listen to them and um, basically convince you that you should buy our whole back catalogue. And we've also got some special celebrity guests on this episode danny didn't want to go we recorded this one straight up after episode five refusing to leave yeah <laughs> so um i've been on six percent beer so um words will evade me soon and then jim has joined us for this episode hello jim hi how are you all how are you <laughs> yeah i'm really good i've got my professional setup here the yeah, that was a stands. very professional voice as well. I know, this nice. is my podcast voice. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hi! It's my postman voice I have to do in public. Like. You do have to have a podcast voice. like So I have to do some of my teaching on Teams now. And then all my students laugh. They go, why do you put on that podcast voice when you're doing it on Teams? You don't sound like that in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> like that. You've got to have this strict. I've got loads of voices. I've got my dad's voice when I have to... Pretend that I know things and slightly command in tone, like. <laughs> What's that going on? Let's hear it. I don't know. You'll hear it in a minute when my kids come back. And I go, kids, can you just go in the kitchen a minute and leave that alone? Just for five minutes now. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. That was very good. I, yeah, I, I feel like I need to go to the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what. <laughs> next bit is idea gig. Danny, can you just play this song next week? <laughs> I, I, I just need to speak to you a minute. Just, yeah. just a minute. <laughs> That's How good. did you get your microphone stand to stay up just like that, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't fallen down once. Can, like can you do mine? Just, yeah, just do mine yeah. Say nothing else. <laughs> That's what I need more than anything. So it's just sort of my microphone stand at every gig ever. And <laughs> when I'm in my living room, I look a bit as well. <laughs> so, should we talk about the first release in this section? We're talking about uh, TNS 51 all the way to TNS 60. And we're back on the Wonk Unit reissues. So this is a uh, second Wonk Unit album on vinyl. That is a, a truly terrifying face, isn't it? It is a great cover, isn't it? At least they've got cocks on this one. <laughs> that is very League of Gentlemen esque, isn't it? <laughs> I always like looking at things like. You think when he was taking that photo, you just hope <laughs> that someone's walked past as that's happening. And, <laughs> No, no idea why. Just Alex there posing naked. Like. 
Alex likes a Y front, doesn't he? Is that a Y front? Yeah. Mm. Is that what a Y front is? Yeah. I don't know. I it won't be my choice of underwear, but. No. <laughs> I was. Lo- I thought you were going to check what pants you had on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who, me? I'm, yes. I'm itching. I'm itching. I don't know what pants I got on. Probably Christmas ones off my mum. Probably got my <laughs> name on them. She puts, like, everything I get off my mum still personalised, even though I'm 35. Like. Yeah, I think that's good. So I think that's good. Yeah. Nice. I'm getting stolen. We've yeah. talked about Wonk Unit quite a lot. So, Jim, what? tell us your first experiences of Wonk Unit. How did you meet them? Uh, we played, there's a gig in Wales called Slugfest, and we, they, I think they headlined. We didn't really speak to them that day, I think it was on quite early, and I don't, and it got very blurry, as, like, Welsh Valley's gigs do. Then we played in Portsmouth with them, in the Birdcage a while after that, and then Alex really liked us, so then that was it then, we were, we, we were made for life then, weren't we, because then he got us on to, uh, Wonk Fest, and then we just ended up doing. Uh, we did a tour with them, and ended up doing loads of gigs, and they're just fucking brilliant. And the best ever when we went, what well, see them in Britain, and whenever they play, there's about three million people, and everyone knows the words and everything that they do. But then when we did the tour with them, we we're playing to like twenty people in a pub in Belgium. It's just fucking great then seeing Alex doing all this stuff to on people who've never seen it before, and just watching how quickly they can fall under the spell as well. That was great. I really enjoyed seeing that. It gave me the confidence because I was worried never playing. I don't know about when when you lot play abroad, I worry and thinking, well, if I speak, no one's going to understand what I'm saying between the songs and worrying. And I watched Wonk Unit do it the first night and it's just like, fuck it. I'm just doing our set how we do it and then give me the confidence. And go, well, that's all you do then. You just carry on acting as normal. Like, I don't think we've ever played with Wonk in Europe because I always wondered because Alex is sort of like a it's not stand up, but it's like a comedy thing, isn't it? And then like Robin Random Hand is like that. But I didn't know if they were like only things that worked if you were British. Do you know what I mean? Like if the comedy translated. Yeah, I know what Europe, you're, but... Yeah, well, some of it you'd think maybe some of it would go unless you've got a really good grasp of the language. You you would yeah. get but but everyone loved it and watching some of the people might have seen him before, but you could see I'm just I was just people watching in the crowd as he's doing it, going, well, This is fucking great. It's like these people who might not even speak very good English and they're all still in bits, but he's very good anyway. And he, and he, and he yeah, he's yeah, very, he's very good at getting the crowd on his side. And it was really, really entertaining watching it when it was last people basically. Like, yeah, that's cool. Nice. I think, um, this, this album was two EPs joined together, wasn't it? Am I right? I think, yeah, right. what was uh, yes, yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. I've got it, I can't remember what's on that one. It's Trolley, thank you, and one unit saved my life. Two EPs joined together. Yeah, well, I was trying to put a pop filter on there. It didn't fuck the pop filter. The ones they play up. live a lot. Um, Los Angeles, they play a lot live, don't they? Runnings. Guts, yeah. It's always seems to be a favourite, yeah. Oh, Guts is a fucking great one. Like, if you listen to last episode, you will have heard this already, but we decided after starting to work with One Unit that we'd re-release their earlier releases that had only been on CD before on vinyl, which obviously... Um, we're in a stage now where everyone just gets everything on vinyl, but you know, we oh, so this there. was early on when, like, before vinyl started making the mega comeback. That it has, yeah, like. so the, I think the last episode we'd just done was really the the one where everything suddenly was on vinyl again, and it had to be on vinyl again, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah. weren't they? Do you sell more vinyls than you sell CDs, like for we your do, web store? We do, we do on pre order. Yeah. Um, we yeah, we probably do in general, like when gigs were happening. Um, from a personal band perspective, I found that you still sold a lot of CDs at gigs. Easier for so I think to bands, carry that, all, yeah, isn't it? bands that gig a lot, I think, still shift a, a decent amount of CDs. Who knows what it'll be like after? Mm. But yeah, you don't, as you say, you don't want to carry a, a vinyl around at a gig, no, do you? You know you're losing it or breaking it before you even get on the train, don't you? Yeah, and it's not an in, in, insignificant amount of money either, is it? No, like, no. You sell a CD for four quid, you don't really care, do you? And you still, and you'll always wake up with it in your pocket in the morning, like. Yeah, I think it's it depends on the band as well. So, one yeah. unit will shift a lot of CDs because they've got an older crowd. Um, but yeah, since since we started putting these out, I think they still ship more vinyl. Um. But like the Harajan release recently was still more vinyl, but quite high on CDs. Yeah, when are these vinyl getting sent out, Bev? They're getting sent out on 
four weeks ago. Oh, you just haven't bothered because you got it. <laughs> oh, pre-order from TNS. You'll get. All, I'm fucking. I've given you my money. I've got nothing. Shoddy setup, isn't it? It is disgraceful. You should be sending these things out straight away after people have ordered them. Isn't it? <laughs> if you didn't spend your Christmas day packing Harajan vinyls, I don't know what the fuck you were hey, doing. I spent yeah. the day before Christmas taking them to Big Hands so he could pack them up. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually met all the Big Hands on Christmas Day and we spent some time making sure condensation didn't leak off the roof of his garage onto the Harajan <laughs> What did you do? Just go and lift them into the house for a so bit while drinking? Plastic, uh, plastic um, t-shirt mailers and Mailers and just put them over the top. Oh, there we go. What do they get? Condens? I got fucking like 300 vinyl in my garage. Yeah, well, got new ones. <laughs> oh, fuck it, isn't it? Well, like he that. didn't think so. And it was, another, it was an awful moment for him when he realized. Oh, oh I might have to check. I might check I later. Say, I haven't been in my garage. Damage, for three so I will be taking you to small claims court. Um, I mean, yeah, you'll yeah. know by now when this goes out. But... Yeah, it's fine, though. It's fine. <laughs> Who are they? It's like your best of compilation collection, yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, it's the oh, last it... album, Colossal Velocity. Oh, that's Colossal the one. Oh, no. So uh, it's obviously a Partridge reference. Uh, they all are, aren't they? They all, all Partridge are, yeah. references, yeah. Yeah, all the albums are. All the out albums, with you. Yeah, so this is a, um, the last full album. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny one. Um. I think it's got some of the better songs on it. Um, I think it's a weird thing to say, but I think we tried too hard with this album because we spent ages and ages on it. We were practicing three times a week. Um, we spent a little bit more money in the studio than we would have done in the past. We wanted to work with this particular um, studio and we thought, it, and you know, we're really happy with the quality of the sound, but I feel like we almost tried a little bit too hard with it. I don't think for me, my favorite, Revenge album is the one before Shattered Dreams. But then I'm just looking at the back cover and I don't know how you two feel, but I forget which songs on which album. <laughs> Shattered Dreams is the one with like the Clint Eastwood song and all on, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I remember I was... Tim G's remix, which is possibly the best thing that TNS has released across the board. <laughs> 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 this was the point where Revenge, like Big Hands had changed his job and we were like, let's just play every single weekend. So we've put a load of time into this and played every single weekend and things did massively change for us, really. I think it was the point yeah, where... But fuck me, it's hard, didn't it? We done that. It's fucking difficult. <laughs> it's the point where we went from being like happy with whatever slot we had, which we always were happy with whatever slot we had, but we, all of a sudden everyone wanted us to play last. <laughs> yeah. When you're yeah, a hard a shit pick. Band, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's fine when you're on fit. Yeah, everything's <laughs> good. And then by the time you're headlining, well, they're shitting, mate. Well, yeah, can none of them can stand up or fucking talk? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, can you do 45 minute sets? Have you fucking heard our music? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. talk you're a lot also, of- best oh, slot, best slot for any band, main support. Because if you if you play brilliantly, you look even better than the main band. If you play shit, it's not that bad because it's yeah, like it you're your main matter. support in it. And yeah. then like, and you and you're like you're banging them. You haven't had that much time to drink, so you can't. You're not too hammered. Do you know what I mean? That's the best. Yeah, the that best is like, the ultimate slot. Like, and yeah. for a punk band as well, you know, tw- half an hour, fucking bang all the best ones in and, and out. That's the fucking best slot you can do as a punk yeah. band. There's no such thing as a 45 minute set, as if. Fuck. <laughs> 45 minutes of gym talking, that's what you get. <laughs> well, also, that is, that's all we do is extend the talking, isn't it, when it's 45 <laughs> minutes. Don't play any more songs. But you say you might play badly because you're drunk, but like the, the majority of gigs you all play, everyone's absolutely hammered by the time you come on anyway. So nobody yeah, knows. Yeah, I know. As long as you get away with it. Nobody cares. It's all right unless you watch videos. Like I don't, I won't watch them anymore because I watch an MPRV one going. I think it was MPF. We did that one in the morning. I was like, "What a fucking shit band we are!" <laughs> that late at night, Jesus fucking Christ, it's going on for ten minutes about fucking nothing. Like, yeah, but revenge don't do that. You don't go on. 
like you do the bits like saving the venues and all normal good stuff between the songs. You don't go on though, do you? You sort of just get stuck in and get on with it. Like it depends on the gig. We had to sort of well, we we wanted to like link loads of songs together because we think we thought our sort of music sounded better if you link a load of songs together, and it's kind of stopped us doing that as well because we did have a tendency to do that um previously. So I think we got a a lot sort of slicker around that time, really, um, which yeah, says a lot. If I think that's it help as well, doesn't it? If you're doing yeah. it every weekend, you get tight as fuck anyway. Like, I know, but, I know, it is an o- really obvious thing to say, but it literally is. If you gig more, you get so unbelievably tight without even trying. You're just yeah, like, oh, and you don't know, get, you don't know, yeah, you don't notice either, do. it, and you just get really, really good, and you lock in with each other, and you're like, oh, that's why professionals practice all the time that's why yeah. you do it because you get really good in it <laughs> yeah it's right in it and then when you see these proper tune bands like iron maiden or this <laughs> that level's like unreachable for everyone in it you think well they've been doing it for 30 years constant like every 300 day, yeah. gigs in a row like yeah you yeah. are going to be able to throw your guitar 300 foot in the air and catch it on your neck <laughs> like <laughs> fucking great well yeah like go, go. yeah good photo yeah. Well, yeah, going back to that album, I think it's an interesting one because I've always had it in my head, oh, Shattered Dreams was the best one. But, yeah, looking at the songs that are on that, I think um, it's it's all right. We did a, we did all right with that one. <laughs> yeah, we're all good. Uh, it well. certainly was the point where we started getting a bit more um, more tight and a bit more um, serious about, like, wanting to do it all the time, really, rather than just um, when we could. It was just like... What year did that come out then? 2016, yeah. But as Danny says, it's it's fucking hard when you make that decision that it's going to be the thing you do. It was literally like some days I'd I'd finish work and I'd obviously the others could book off days, but I, I work in a college and like you can't cancel your lessons to do a gig. Yeah, you just so have a Friday picked... night gig, you're doing work yeah. and then you're doing the gig. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I'd get I get picked up outside work in the van and then I get <laughs> get home at like you know two or three in the morning on the sunday sometimes and you you hadn't been home since friday morning when you left for work yeah, and it, yeah. and i wouldn't change it for a minute but it is absolutely exhausting yeah it's a it is. Grind, and, it? and when you're doing it every weekend as well it's not like it fucking lets up either because yeah we done similar in like 2011 and and it was just, it just fuck it it, it was, I, again wouldn't change it but fuck me it's difficult and then like we had little dan does like 50 60 hours as a plant fitter he the worst one we done in a row was like two long weekends in europe we'd leave he'd finish work at 7 6 p.m on the thursday he'd book the friday off we'd get in the van he wouldn't even shower he'd get in the van we'd drive to the ferry do the night ferry be back for late Sunday night. You go back at work 5 a.m. Monday morning, then back again the next weekend. And then we're just like, this yeah. isn't healthy. This isn't going to do him any good long term. No, you it can't sustain this. Hard, isn't it? <laughs> I remember and you always get the one in the middle of those gigs who goes, oh, you're so lucky doing this as a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to like no, smile mate. about it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, love being here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember falling asleep. Like I think, I think it was a long. It must have been a long weekend. I, th- I think it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then, so we come back on the Saturday night. So I had my kids on Sunday, and it was a party, and it was like in a soft play thing. And it was my little one was tiny. So I end, I'm like, right, we had to leave. Well, that was it. The Sunday was in Brixton. So it's like, right, I got to go to this party, and then at four o'clock, drop the kids off, and then we go and have to go to Brixton. So then I go to this party and my little one's too small to go in the soft play on his own. So I go in there with him and the next thing I hear someone I know going, Jim, Jim. And I'm like, what? Fuck off a minute. Fuck off a minute. And I open my eyes and everyone's looking at me and I was literally just asleep in the ball pit, just curled up with my little one, the other end of it, like looking at me going, what are you doing, dad? I'm going, this is not fucking good. Like everyone's looking going, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I am asleep in like the little junior toddler bit ball pit. <laughs> Because I've been mean, asleep for four fucking days. It's the most like, peep show story I've ever. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, doesn't that happen in peep oh. show? <laughs> oh, it does. Actually, yeah, I thought about it. I was what I watched peep show. One of the last ones when they got the kid in there. Yeah, what that of the week? Thinking, oh, I've been there. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking bad one that was. They're comfy places though. 
they so are comfy really places. Being in a band here, aren't we? <laughs> but yeah. well, I wouldn't change it. I, I fucking love every minute of it. Really, I say every minute. I I love doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. if you're in it in an aspiring young band and want to be part of the DIY scene, you should definitely do it because. Uh, I think you have to, though, don't you? There's more ups than downs, definitely. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's not Otherwise many we bands. Keep doing it. <laughs> there's not many <laughs> bands who get anywhere and get good at doing it unless they're fucking relentless at it, though, isn't it? You have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're going to keep saying yes and doing loads of gigs, then you're never going to. You don't get anywhere because you need as many. There's not that many people go to punk gigs, so you need all the people who do go to punk gigs to see you, or you ain't going to get. And like Danny said, you ain't getting tight unless you. You can't. It's only so tight you can get in band practice when it sounds the same. And so you go on playing in every size venue and tent and pub and club and no PA and PA and singing through my guitar amps. You don't know how to do it, do you, until you've done it? And then it, that's the only way of doing it, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. true. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> I'm quite coherent today. I don't like it. <laughs> Drop my kids off in an hour back home and then I'll drink this slider I got here by seven slider. o'clock at night. <laughs> slider. That's what it's called. Well, I don't know. That's a that's a rack he was when he made it this time. That is how he spelled it. Look, he hasn't spelled it slider. He spelled it backwards, isn't it? It's spelled S B L I D E R. Splider. Today. Splider. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it's slow gin inside. That's what it usually is. But he's put that foot when he's made it. He's got the name wrong on it. <laughs> the name that he made up. <laughs> yeah, he's made it up and spelled it wrong. He's invented an alcoholic drink and can't spell it himself. <laughs> don't get high on your own supply, innit? <laughs> Oh, wicked. What's it called? Or something, uh, what's it called? Something of Wolves, isn't it? Masquerade of Wolves. Masquerade of Wolves. Orchestra of Wolves. That's a gallows, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking but, great... That's a, it's an EP, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. seven inch. So I'd, I'd seen these a couple of times. It's one where there's loads of labels involved again. And we didn't... Um, I'd met them, but I didn't really know them very well. But they got in touch and I'd seen them a couple of times. I was like, yes, can we please do this one, Bev? I really like this band. Oh, they were mate. They broke up now, haven't they? They're so, yeah. what, a, what a good live band as well. Fuck yeah. Hell. So, um, they, yeah, it, it would have been nice if they'd gone on to do an album and stuff. But um, as we've talked about a lot on these podcasts, it's one of the big things um, releasing records does is provide a documentation of music that's happened. And I think, I think like, I'm really glad that we've got, a documentation that that band existed. It's a really cool EP. Yeah. Yeah. You think um, when you see on these like vinyl collecting groups and all on Facebook and the older generation of punks talk about it, all these bands we would never have heard of and that, that people would go, oh, I've got this like battered old seven inch thing. Hopefully in 20 years time, it'd be the same thing in it with the TNS ones, that there's this hard trail of all, oh, well, in between in the year 2000 and whenever you started 2005 or something was it up until now there's this documentation these proper records they're never going anywhere you don't throw records in the bin do you so yeah. there's always going to be these records kicking about showing that what happened and what bands they were you know yeah you know, i was thinking the other day i really like the um i've forgotten his name now but there was a record label in manchester called records or it didn't happen and i kind of like that kind of name yeah, that's, and... well that's right yeah let it's, until yeah, you're on it it and that's it then, isn't it? It's, it's done for it's done forever, like yeah, it's never going time. away. Oh, yeah, really fucking Spotify, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we're taking yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, you take, yeah. We deleted. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Really happy to have that in the collection, really. And yeah, they were ace, weren't they? You've been on live, aren't you, Jim? Like we play with them a few times. Yeah, they're they're fucking great. Amazing, another band, the singer, she's in a band called Circle None. You heard them, they're fucking good. Yeah. Like, drummer's like, in Jeremy yeah. from the Restarts, isn't it? Yeah. I can't remember what oh, else. Right, Tom, yeah. Tom, the, Tom the guitarist. I don't know if he's in another band. Um, I'm not sure he records a lot of stuff there, doesn't he? he did, Lawrence is in Dub Writers. Yeah, yeah, they're still all doing it. Circle None are really good, though. But I think yeah. May, because she's she lives in Egypt. And then, but she is trying to, she comes over here and then she could only stay for a certain period of time, I think, but then has to go back 
to Egypt as well. Yeah. I think she just gets extended visas or something. But then yeah, circling them, like they're it, fucking wicked. Facebook and that. Um, Dub writers um, do well as well, don't they? Well, they did when gigs could happen. They'd yeah, they're great. Like all at Wonk Fest and stuff. Yeah, I assume just before lockdown, they played in, in a strip club in Bristol. Well, we really? played a gig and I was about to go home and they all walked in. I'm like, what are you doing here? Oh, we're playing a gig in a strip club down there. Do you want to come? So, all right, then. I think I went home about three days later, then. <laughs> <laughs> Standing stand in my head in Bristol. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nothing you've said about that story surprises me. <laughs> no, no. I could not think I had a bit of squat or something like that. It was really good. Nice. <laughs> good shot. Nice to have them part of TNS family, even though it was yeah. um, just for that one release. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we got graded and conscious youth, conscious youth split. Um, yeah, so this was like um, a twelve-inch single, I guess, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So Good artwork, four songs it? on it. So we'd done quite a lot with Brain Dead. Um and Conscious Youth, um Matt out of Pumpkin and Joe York, wasn't it? Um so right, yeah. Let's get a drink. So Brain Dead, um, yeah, we've yeah, done those releases, but uh 12 inch singles, quite a nice thing. Multi label release again. So uh seven labels involved in this one. Yeah, Brain Dead are wicked. Yeah, Big you must have played with Brain Dead a bit in Europe. Yeah, in Hamburg, yeah. Well, in a few places, but yeah. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. They do, they're basically like a TNS over there, and they? They do loads for yeah. various different stuff over there. Yeah, they've got loads going on. Yeah, they're an awesome band. I mean, Hamburg is... From? Just the are they from Germany, are they? Yeah, yeah, Hamburg, yeah. Oh, cool. Have you played Hamburg, Jim? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think we did. No, we, no, we, it's not, yeah, we're not like, oh, in a blur. I was just trying to think what city. No, we, did, I think we did like five gigs in Germany, but don't, we didn't, we didn't play Hamburg. We didn't play uh, Berlin either. It was like smaller places. I don't think we played Hamburg. Yeah, we need to get you over to Hamburg, really, then. <laughs> the so mad, the maddest one in Hamburg was when, what did Revenge play that, that site that was like banging in the middle of it? Oh, yeah, the um, Gauss Platz. Uh, that's it, yeah, yeah. Fucking that was like a mad trailer place, park. wasn't it? It was um, incredible that place. We played there the, twice. The venue fun. just had the massive skull as the doors, didn't it? Like yeah. I don't know, like yeah. fourteen foot skull as the doors. What for the venue? Like <laughs> for the yeah. venue, yeah, yeah. It was fucking a, great. A venue built into this like a uh, trailer park, so loads of people lived on the site. Yeah, um, it's like a traveller site, wasn't it? But bang in yeah. the middle of the city as well. <laughs> oh, amazing. We don't get everything... that in Britain, do you? No, no. It's everything you think about Hamburg compressed into a small area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. And um, I say that with the. With the greatest amount of respect, oh, we, had we, had a weird, we had a weird experience. We didn't. We, this weren't a night we played with Brain Dead, but they they come to the gig. We so it, it was a Tuesday night in Hamburg, right? And after they were like, "Oh, there's this secret club that you can go to, and it's a ping pong club." So it's like, uh, it was, it was either a Monday or a Tuesday. It was a midweek, like you know, mid, they weren't a weekend. And you go into this club. You weren't, you're not allowed to film or take photos of anyone. Like fairly standard in the squatty places. But they, what, in, in case mid- people find out their ping pong technique. Well, they, I, I like f- tried to film Bobble playing. I, I'll, well, I'll explain in a minute. But they, there's <laughs> bit, in the middle of this club, massive ping pong table, right? And you each get a bat. So there's like I don't know, thirty odd people all lined up with a ping pong bat, and you have one hit the ball. And you have to hit it back and forth and you move around in a big circle. So you're all circling. If you miss your shot, you're out. And so it slowly ciphers down. Oh, like killer, like pool there's sort like, of thing. And then there's like mid 90s hip hop playing in this sound system. Bobble was shit faced, like shouting it, like trying to umpire this match of a thing that there was no umpires for. And, uh, and yeah, and then you eventually get down to like one on one and you play like best of three and then it ends and then you just start again. And it was like this secret ping pong club in the middle of Hamburg. But it was only ever like Tuesday nights or whatever, which yeah. we've done it twice <laughs> now. But then, then it doesn't happen again and you're not allowed to take any photos or anything of it. And then you get what? Goldschlager as well. It's like if you've played and lost or whatever, you get a shot Goldschlager. I thought you were going to say it used to be open. It was like... Yeah. 
this is the way they get around some licensing laws is play ping pong. Yeah. I think it was, it was something to do with that. Yeah. Where you couldn't, it was like a sports club or whatever, or you had to pretend it was a sports club. So you played this round robin game of ping pong. <laughs> yeah. nice. Hamburg is one of the greatest places on the planet, isn't it? Yeah. That, well, that Gauss Platz that we were just talking about, one of the most amazing moments in my band career and in my life really is um, I was crowd surfing um what, during our set in Gaussplatz in this place with a massive school door and I just like was up in the air and then I just nearly hit something on the ceiling and it was like a, a massive um, taxidermy um, sort of scene with a stoat which I, I thought it was an otter <laughs> but I got told later by a German person it was a stoat um, and there's a revenge song was an otter. surfing past the stoat <laughs> it was just it was a blur <laughs> You absolute amateur! I can't believe you even stick a stoke for an otter. Yeah. <laughs> and you had the audacity in your TNS Christmas quiz to do an animals round. <laughs> well, <laughs> post more attention after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's when he learned about stoats. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're very much going through a one unit stage at the moment. Should we move on to the next one? And we were like, also, they released in a short. Oh, it was re releases, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they were re releases. But this was. Um, but this was, yeah. This was, yeah. Actually, yeah, you're right, Andy. This is the first plaster release. Um, so we did this as a joint release with one unit. And Alex has the, um, the brains to put the year of the release on. I think I'll do. It's yeah. only really needed for these sort of podcasts. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. This was our first, like, uh, massive pre-order, wasn't it? Like, it, a lot of things we do now, like, you sort of take for granted that, like, like in the past, like, things were different to what they were now. Like, we now, like, the pre-order is always, always the biggest period of sales. And, uh, and that, but in the past, like, Sometimes a lot of the sales wouldn't come until after you'd actually released it, would they? Yeah, then- I, I, I can remember sitting in work with my phone and just getting the PayPal emails, just pinging it in for this. And it just kept going. And it was, yeah, the first time we've actually uh, shifted a decent amount in the first yeah, pre-order. And you rely on it, I take it, then. You need that pre-order money to yeah, actually pay now, for the records. So, yeah. Well, we, it's not necessary to cover the pressing, but that's the majority of our sales will come in the first couple of days. Before it comes out, yeah. Yeah, and then the suppose team... once it's out and the bands have got it and people tending to buy them at the gigs off the bands and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's a good day for us. To, like, the first excitement, lots of people talking about it. Um, lots of people... I think that's the way the music industry's now. gone in general, though, isn't it? Because I never historically used to buy something until it was out like you'd say to the record shop that your local record shop oh i'll have one of them put it to one side and um, when it comes out yeah but, yeah not actively go and buy it like six months before it's released yeah, totally. like yeah. Yeah. but it's yeah it's where all our sales well a lot of our sales come from um, and that's why we'll drive kind of like limited stuff um like we did with the next release and where we're unsure we'll like kind of put things to try and pull people in um yeah so that's we work hard on that cynical picture discs and stuff like that yeah cynical. <laughs> <laughs> no that, well that's a, for another day but that wasn't yeah. that was that was our Clear cash grab <laughs> 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 you've got to acknowledge the fact that um the sort of thing we do is move to a and either an investment in the scene level or a collector level, hasn't it? You yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you've you got you got to do both. And like you need to do them things because you know it'll sell and you need the money. So why wouldn't you do it? Like yeah, that, I suppose. And, it? and we're it's the... nice to have nice things as well. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. And we're, we're we're kind of at the level where we've got to hustle for every sale. So anything we can do to bring any money in to actually cover cover our costs and be able to put out new stuff is you know yeah, it's like as well like not that i uh, you know there's upsides and downsides to the way it's gone but it is also like 
you know, 15 years ago, you probably wouldn't have done a picture disc. Do you know what I mean? Unless you could afford it. So it's like, it's like it has sort of forced him innovation in, in a certain sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, not yeah. not that it's great that everyone can get it for free and so like and fair play yeah. like most people do but like it has like you do have to think more interestingly now about what you're going to do with releases didn't you and you have to you do have to adapt to what's going on yeah so like you are getting some more interesting stuff coming through out of necessity <laughs> yeah we're yeah. always looking for a different angle or always looking at how everyone does everything and saying oh, yeah, yeah. You apply that to tns or how what could we do to improve our sales? And I think that's, you'll see through how we do stuff from the first release to now, we're kind of constantly evolving in what we, we do and learning less. Learn, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to be flexible, haven't you? Like you can't rigidly say, I'm going to stick to this. And because the world changes, I think, um, like, I think there's probably a point in the early days where we would have said um, if someone like Spotify and stuff wasn't that big in the early days. But I think if someone had said to us in the early days, this is a thing, they don't really pay the artists, you would have gone, fuck that. Yeah, I yeah. I'm not asked about that. But in reality, there is an element to everything being so widely available that levels the playing field to an extent. It's just really, really shit that mm-hmm. they don't support the artists. Yeah, so you'd you be find stupid that... to not put your band on Spotify, wouldn't you? Well, you yeah. have to, don't you? And it seems like it is. They should pay artists more. But then there's a f- when bands say about it, they hate them, thinking yeah, but it is one of them. You, you've because you've got to. It doesn't matter what you think about it. You still need to do it. And loads of people at our gigs come up and say, "Oh, uh, when we did the gig in the middle of the uh, the lockdowns when they, we did an open door one, and all these people we were playing outdoors in Bristol, I never met." Because of the lockdown and people just being stuck at home and not having much money, go and find all these bands on Spotify. And loads of people come and go, oh, we can't believe you're playing. What, what are you on about? We play Bristol about once a month. Oh, we yeah, just yeah. heard you on Spotify. And we can't believe you. And it makes like they uh, it, the advantages is that. And hopefully most people are like what we probably are. Where if you hear a good band on Spotify, you're like, well, you, you don't want to just listen to it. You need a physical vinyl or a CD in your hand. You need to go and do them thing. Oh, I want yeah, a t-shirt yeah. of that band. I was a massive artist. You probably got just listen to Spotify and pirate the album, like. But <laughs> yeah. we're seeing sure. a lot more. I think we're seeing a lot more T-shirt purchases for that reason. Is that people yeah. don't really want the the record or the CD, but they want to support people, so they'll buy a CD. Yeah. That's a, it's a it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Like it's been t-shirt. said fucking loads of times before, but like obviously back 20, 30 years ago, to get your music into I don't know Asia or Russia or fucking wherever. You, you had to have deals or you had to have somewhere getting it there. Whereas now, even though, yeah, people can just listen and not buy it, but also you can get your music literally to any corner of the world. Yeah, instantly, immediately. Yeah, exactly. Immediately, yeah. Well, you, you toured Russia, didn't you? That, that wouldn't have happened 30 yeah. well, years no, that, ago, We it? literally toured Russia because of Last FM. Do you remember that? That was like... Oh, yeah. We, 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 like, we went on there. Things like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And we had a shitload of people that had written in like Krillic, the Russian alphabets. We were like, okay. And then someone got in contact was like, yeah, you, you've you know, like you do all right over here. Like, do you want to come over? And we're like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Like, why yeah, not? And that was purely bad, because of Last FM. Like, if, if it hadn't been through the internet, we wouldn't have been there. Because how the fuck would we have got to Russia? Do you know? What yeah, I mean? like, yeah. And from yeah. the point of view of a very small band, like I, I don't think you can, you can even put into words how amazing the experience of being in a place which is thousands of miles from where you live and yeah. someone who you've <laughs> someone never met it. in your yeah, words back at you. Like, I'm amazed they can decipher my words, but, like, someone you don't know in fucking Poland is singing yeah, yeah. your words back at you, and you go, how do you know about this? And they go, well, I, I downloaded it, but can I, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't paid anything yet. Can I buy a patch or whatever? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, that, that is such it? an amazing thing. So there's pros and isn't cons it, yeah. to everything, isn't there? Also, like, I, I just, you know... I never assumed this was going to be my job anyway. So, like, you know, the fact we get to travel with my mates and fucking yeah, exactly, it, yeah, like, fuck it. It's good, like, certain good bands fun, would probably it? moan because anyone who treats it like a career in it and thinks we want to make money, then it, well, Spotify aren't playing this enough. But then yeah, most yeah. people like us are going, huh, I don't care if like them ten thousand people just listen to it for free because ten thousand people just listen to that. Yeah, like, exactly. That, that would never have happened in the old and days. Like, I, just... I haven't had to pay money for band in fucking years. Like we, you know, Russia. So, like band paid for that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, well, I got, fuck it. I wouldn't have gone to Russia. Do you know what I mean? Or wherever. Like, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I look at it. Like, like I'm not, you know, I know I'm not going to make a career out of it, but like, 
I've got no, to but you're not people. losing money hand over fist. Yeah, we're not losing even money. Generation. <laughs> yeah, well, we <laughs> break even, <laughs> and I got you know, I know loads of people through a scene that are like shared values and shared, you know, yeah, kind of shit. So like, why not? It's fucking. Yeah, it's great. I, I, yeah. I think that's a kind of, well. I guess it's the same reason we run TNS how it is. We run it not for profit, and well, I think we started off doing that. It's like we don't want this to be the focus of why we're doing anything. Is to can anyone see the uh, can anyone see the video of this? Are you releasing this as video or just audio? Yeah, yeah you can video. Oh, yeah. I was going to make a comment about you sitting on a gold throne, but that's not going to fucking. Oh work. yeah, <laughs> you see Bev sitting on a gold <laughs> stool, yeah. can you? Because he can't see his shit. Yeah. Bev on his gold stool. Yeah. Bev like Scrooge McDuck with just piles yeah. of coins <laughs> behind him. Going, this is that a not profit. That cap hung up there has got gold bullion underneath it. Yeah. yeah well, that's. But those are vital things for running the label, so we need them. Yeah, so that's, that's why I need this jet. We had loads of messages like people when the records and CDs yeah, come out, it. message and go say, Oh, we were waiting to buy it off you, we were not off the record label. I'm like, did not Sony, <laughs> they're not Sony, they're our mates. You, you are allowed to buy it off them, they need the money more than us. They're the ones they just paid for all the records that we got given for free. Oh, oh you were to buy it off you. It's like, oh, yeah, well, thanks. You're a lot. a lot nicer than me, Jim. I just always go, yeah, TNS are robbing bastards. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. buy it off us, don't give them anything. Yeah, well, I, I might start going down that road. I know, I know we're struggling a bit with a lot, them. I've started doing it. Stop supporting, <laughs> stop supporting TNS, support your well, local people. Ne- next time we come to press an album, we'll, we'll... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no guys. Well, Dan, Danny married. said that Danny has been getting royalties on the uh, so now. There's a bit of a rift between the TNS bands coming. Well, we aren't yeah. seeing any money, and fate's idea are living a life of luxury, aren't they? How'd you, yeah, look at. Look at, all <laughs> Look at all these books. I'm not turning my mat around. I've got loads less books than him. <laughs> That's purely that. royalty money, that. That's it's disgusting. It's funny, uh, this conversation, isn't it? Because I'm sure everyone in a band on our level has, has had people come up to and go, oh, it's amazing you get to do this as a job. And you're yeah, like, oh, yeah. don't realise how far away from being my job it is. Job? But like <laughs> When you look back at, like, when you were growing up as a kid, like, I, I, you know, I've seen, like, both your bands play to ridiculously big crowds. Um, and if someone had told me, like, like, you know, we do Made Avail, like Fate's Idea did Made Avail, Revenge and Made Avail. If someone had told me Pizza Tramp would have two and a half thousand people at Rebellion and, you know, all these things, all Fate's Idea have been all over the world. And you, you'd think, surely that's their job. Oh, making money, <laughs> yeah. 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 Even if you're not rich, you're making money off it. it. <laughs> well, there was a band, remember, like a really heavy band called Will Haven? Can you remember them? I remember yeah. Will Haven, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I went to watch them. I was like 15. They played in Newport, and like they're great. And like they were big. They were always on like Kerrang CDs of rock sound CDs and all. I went and watched them. They're great. And then I was hanging out with the singer afterwards. They were cool. And I'm like, oh, my God, this band... They're like, by the merch desk, let's just go over and go, do you, want a, do you want a drink? Buy him a drink. Oh, my God, I'm hanging out at Will Haven and get chatting to him, going and saying that. It, it must be amazing to this. He's like, oh, no, that's why we only come over in the summer. I'm a school teacher. And I'm like, <laughs> you're the singer in Will Haven. Then you realise that all them, back, other than like Slipknot level or where they're doing it, that all the, well, I remember Lost, Pro- like, oh, Lost Profits, he, in that, my kids are bad, so I can't, he was a postman. <laughs> And that song, Last Train Home, was about that. They were massive Lost Profits after their first album, but he was still a postman, mm. like, catching a train to London to record this second album. I think that, that boggles my mind, because they were, like, the biggest band in the UK, but they still weren't making enough money to, to not do a job. Like. you got to think as well, rock bands, though, you've got to split it five ways. If you're a DJ or a rapper, that's one yeah, fee that's for you. one yeah. person. If you're even a three piece, splitting like a fee three ways before even like you know you're you, costing it. I hope that you pay the brass feet. section less than you get paid for playing a real <laughs> instrument though. Our, our like our newest addition, our trumpet player has a degree in classical music and like oh. is a phenomenal musician. But you're still giving him no money. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't got strings on it. It hasn't got strings on it. <laughs> Talking about classical musicians, 
Our next Classical. release was uh... oh, classical music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the composers, the really expensive, high, highly sought after, well produced first album that we recorded in about four hours <laughs> for 150 quid. <laughs> So, so I, yeah, it was a good rate of return on that, though, isn't it? It yeah, yeah. definitely was, yeah. <laughs> Me and Bev had, like, heard um, the Pizza Champ EPs and we really liked it. I remember, like, sharing posts between us and going, oh, have you heard this? I, I paid for downloads and stuff. I bought the CDs off Bandcamp. Did actually. you? Yeah. Oh, no. and, um, and then, obviously, uh, we met because you were playing with Revenge in Leeds. And yeah, we was a great gig, wasn't it? Bad yeah. apples. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think sold out on there. It's only like a tiny venue, but it was sold out. And it oh, yeah, it was pretty. Wild. I can remember a message from you, Andy, going, um, it, that Leeds gig, have you got space in the van? I want to go and check out Pizza Tramp. To, and yeah. it was, <laughs> we did go to that gig thinking, yeah, we like what they sound like. Uh, yeah, I think we were quite good that night as well. Because that was the first we played up north. So I like I was like, I better not get too drunk and mess this up, right? I think the gig the night before I'd made a right show of myself. I was like, we better be good. And I think that well that night was all good bands. It was like No Tar and Tossa Lad as well, wasn't it? It was a yeah. great oh, yeah, gig. Yeah. That. Where was that in Leeds? Yeah, yeah bad, bad apples. apples. So it's only yeah, eighty it cap mad. and eighty cap when you look at the room, you're like is it 80 cap? <laughs> yeah, but when you've been playing, you like... Yeah, uh, everyone's watching on the stairs on the way down. Huh? We've been together about a year playing to 10 people in Newport every weekend. So that was like... <laughs> it was like playing in Wembley for us. Like, Where's all these, look at all these people here. That's oh, so that funny. Yeah. yeah. All the photos are from that gig, aren't they, on the stairs? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure you asked me whether you could use that photo. No, I didn't, no. I never <laughs> asked you for any... I, whenever I see... Whenever I see people, like, say... Uh, I, I think I'm probably meant to tag Bev in loads of stuff, but I never did. That's my photos. No permission, no tagging. Nah, Fuck him. No, nah, I never asked. Well, no, because we're on your record label. You don't, you've got no say in it. <laughs> you anyway. make enough money out of him anyway, Bev. Don't. You we're saying about royalties. Nah, I, nah. I pay them straight to me for use of the photo. <laughs> yeah, for photo usage. Yeah. <laughs> That's a separate podcast. You just crying about how all the bands, every UK <laughs> band has never, never even like tagged you in every profile picture you do. No, no, everyone every else album. does. Yeah. Everyone oh, else. everyone else does. Just, just not me. That's fine. <laughs> you know I'll change. I'll change my profile picture later, and I'll, and I'll tag you in it just to keep you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Replace your face with Bev's face. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'll get Martin Battle on it. He's good at photoshopping me. <laughs> I've gone rogue anyway. I told you I've repressed a CD on my own, didn't I? It's sold out, and I repressed them again. I told yes, you this, you didn't did. I? So I've gone rogue, and now I make all the money off of Pete's Trans. Bootlegged your own gear. Yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> can't, I've found that I, I can't even remember who I got to do it. They're good though. They look exactly the same. <laughs> no, we made a hundred percent profit, and we had a thousand more. Well, we had a thousand more done. And then, and then a lockdown happened. I've got a thousand CDs at my house. <laughs> You should, you should uh, speak to Big Hands about your troubles. Yeah, I'll shift them. I might the sell them to Big Hands. The CD. <laughs> I got thousands of them by there. I'm I know. not getting I mean, up, though. My last two beers, I've been 6%ers, so. Not accident. It, I'm also on the... interesting beer I've just had. I'm still on the water. My, um, my kids have come back. They're very quiet. You're right, kids? Milkshake. <laughs> Rocking in at a nice 6%. <laughs> What's it called? I have got my glasses Florida on. Nan. Nan? Yeah, I thought it said Florida man, but it say nan. Is it nice though? Yeah, I like the can. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. nice. Um, but it is only um, 20 to 4, so today's going to be nice. That's fine. <laughs> it is Christmas though, isn't it? I'll take you off all yeah, week. Yeah, you keep going. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, about it. No, I've got a lesson soon. I think what, a <laughs> Zoom <laughs> lesson? <laughs> be one of your more sober ones, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, I've had students go, have you ever taught me with a hangover, Andy? And I'm like, I'm not. I've, I've, yeah. I've taught you drunk, let alone yeah. fucking hangover. Um, so, any memories from recording this? Did you have uh, it before we asked you about putting something? I out? think so. Yeah, we were going to do it. So I'm, the first ones we did are just in them cardboard wallets because I'm really cheap in there. I didn't know they want that much more. So I have the CD. So we done them. I think we did two EPs. We do them all with Jeff Rose, who's like it got a little. It's just a tiny little room in Newport on in an industrial estate. And he's it was in Skindred. He's a guitarist in Skindred and Dub War, and he's great. He is. So we always go to him. And that one, 
I think we were just going to release it as like one of them things. And then we went and recorded it. And I think you messaged us, oh, we've just done an EP. And, oh, it's actually enough for an album. So then it, I'm glad because like, it looks much better, doesn't it? When it's on a vinyl and when it's on the CD and all, it's, it's much better. And then it come out really well. It was one of them ones because we wrote songs and then rehearsed them for ages. I was sick of it when it came out, but I listened to it not long ago. And it is pretty good. There's some good songs on there. So That's another thing about releasing really good. stuff, isn't it? Do you do you go back and listen to Pizza Tramp stuff? And... Oh, not not for ages. I haven't listened to the last one yet. Oh well, I, I did the other week because we did some like live stream gig, and I was like, I wanted to play a song off it, and I couldn't remember where it went. So then I went and listened to it. But I can't do it for ages because I'm just sick of it. And when you play them live, anyway, I just, yeah. and I don't like I like the music, but I can't handle you and myself going. Ah, ah, ah. Every time we've recorded, my voice has been conked out from doing I think gigs. That's definitely a thing. When you fucking, when you're recording, so you're, you're practicing them every day up to it. Then you go into the recording, you have to listen to four or five different mixes over the period of time. And you just like get to a point where you're like, I don't even know if this is good anymore. Yeah, I you don't, don't know, know anymore. Yeah. I don't know if this is bad. I just, I've heard this so many times now. That's, that's right. That well, gone we, beyond that, the point of being. We bored blagged of it. it. That one, the first, the last one was like that. that the blowing chunks one was alright because that was when we was, it, we do free takes of every song. But if we get through it once and go, it's alright, then that's it. I think it took like we just recorded it in two hours. We just do it live. Well, the first EP is just all live with the vocals, but then you can hear that us moving away from the mic and back from looking down at the guitar. So then we just do them now. Record it live, then put the vocals and double track guitars on. So we don't have to. And then we go and get coffee from McDonald's for Jeff. And by the time we're back, he's nearly mixed it. Because I said at the start, I was like, it can't sound that good. It can't be overproduced. It's just got to be all right. So then that one was done. I think we just did it in the Saturday afternoon then. And then it's, does, it does sound really good. And it's still quite raw and everything. Then the last one, we, we ended up going back the weekend after to mix it better. And then I ate that then. I'm like, why have we done this? Like, it was fine the way we did. Like, Andy's saying about overthinking things earlier on and the revenge. And then, why have we done this? Let's just do it how we've done the rest and do it quick. But, yeah. but so I never, the mixing, and I can never tell. Even when it's a mix, I'm like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. And then every, and then Sam and Dan will be going, we need the bass up there, need that done. But it, well, I, ne- I don't understand mixing. I, I understand afterwards when it sounds great. But I can never make my ears work well enough to work out what's <laughs> rubbish or not. I think when From you... listening to loads of eighties un- un- underproduced Washington DC hardcore bands, isn't it? That everything <laughs> that hasn't got a hiss on it sounds good to me. Like I think when you're in the band yourself as well, it's hard to to look at the mix, isn't it? Because you're amazed that something you've made is being properly yeah, that it's that thing, yeah, and it mad like you do it in that little room, like yeah. It. It's weird. I love all the music. I don't like you like Sam's vocals. I just don't like your me shakes. It's not very not very good. But everyone else likes it, so it's all right. But just hearing it when you put like the first eat. So it was in a band years ago we recorded something, but it wasn't very good. But then this one, just like the first eat. Well, every time we do it, and when he puts it through the studio monitors, and you're like, we wrote that the other week, just in a band practice room where the sounds crap. And now you're listening to it, and you're like, it sounds like a real punk band. And I yeah, still yeah. always think that with all I'm like, listen to it and go. It sounds like a real band that does. Like, I can't <laughs> believe that. That's a real band that is playing on there. It's just a bit I weird, had a weird moment the other day. Um, I had the MPRV um, podcast on um, just whilst I was doing something for work. I just had it on in the background. And a song come on. I went, oh, this is all right. And it was a revenge song I'd not listened to. It oh, fact. brilliant. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Wow, it wasn't that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you don't know, it's all right. It tricks you then, yeah. Forgot we were, and someone did that on their Alexa or something. It was a pizza tray. And one when we played very often, and I was like, I don't know, a guitar in coming. I was like, oh, I like the sound of this. And then my, I started singing. I'm like, oh, what have you put this on for? Like, I don't want to listen. But until I, until I realized it was us, I was like, oh, this is really good, this. I was like, oh, that's why it's really good. I, I actually wrote this. Like, <laughs> Sounds like something I might like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is right up my alley, this. <laughs> really <laughs> right fast three-chord punk. Like. <laughs> Going back to what we were saying before about um, like doing everything to try and sell records, this was a release where we put it in um, a pizza box for the first oh, the three pizza, orders. And you I've put cooked it. pizza slices in Yeah, it. so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're still not mouldy now. When I moved to this house I mean, now, six months ago, I found that pizza slice 
in the cellophane and it still won't really mold. Oh. I don't know what that says about pizza. That is weird. <laughs> Surely it should be growing trees on it. Yeah. Oh, that's so, the box. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah was... I, I got a more limited edition one than that, haven't I? Because you numbered them one to 25. Then I moaned that I didn't have one. So Bev made me number zero. So <laughs> one I got is number zero. Like. Nice. Yeah, this is when I was still doing up this house. Like had like the front room was just completely empty to decorate, and I just had like twenty five of them in a row. Took hours, absolutely ages. And then somebody complained that I put some sellotape on it and it ripped the front of it. And I was like, they were like, which dickhead would do that? And I'm like, the dickhead that spent ages making twenty five <laughs> of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Been been I know that. people that have put that piece of pizza in a freezer just to keep it. Have they? Oh, actually, I didn't, yeah, didn't have to. It's still fine now. Got a load of one pound pizzas and then, yeah, cellophane of pizza, pizza, like that, put it yeah. in the box. The start of your lucrative pizza tramp selling techniques. <laughs> I think it was, it was well, I limited think we edition t-shirts sell any, as well, though. or something. Wasn't it? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, we didn't think you'd sell any. Like, why have they bothered with this? Like, what are they doing? We only sold yeah. about a hundred CDs in the three years before that. <laughs> they want to put a record out. Yeah, go on, boys, carry on. <laughs> I, know, I think it sold out anyway, didn't it? Yeah, we've repressed it once. I oh, think yeah, that might be sold out as well. Yeah. No, we've got a few, but we've only got about twenty of the repressed oh, left. Right, it's in it? the cupboard. That cupboard there. <laughs> But there's oh, yeah. about 15 to 20 left, so big time now. No, I'm mad. I, I forgot. I think it was about Nirvana or something. They're like on about uh, the first album. What's the first album called? Nothing, it's just called Nirvana, isn't it? What on oh, Bleach? Sorry, I'm Bleach. losing the... and on about saying they had they had very minor success, they only sold 20,000 copies of Bleach in 1989. <laughs> What do you mean only? <laughs> uh, how is this? How what bar is this? It's like, oh, but yeah, they were this little punk rock band and they only sold 20 days now. Al- so we've only sold 20 days and albums in the last seven years of being a band, like, or six <laughs> years of being a band. Just about like I am. And that's including digital ones, I expect, isn't it? Yeah, not even that, Jim. No, it's not even that. <laughs> well, no, it is because our first one's free on Bandcamp. So that's got about 10 days and downloads, and I'm factoring in that free one, yeah. Okay. Never heard of this one. Fuck no. Is that what it's called, or is it just one track? No, it's um, it's, a... <laughs> it's got um. That was the most elaborate oh. arty vinyl oh. ever in it. One track, yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> angst. angst. Two sides, one track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the heavier side of what we do, isn't it? Um, Danish bands. So we've obviously got these close connections with Danish bands um, through Five Feet Under. And um, yeah, so we'd done um, a ten inch for them before, and then we did the full album, which was only a few songs. So, but. Probably longer than any Pizza Tramp or Revenge album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair play to them. If they can find enough chords to fit into that amount of time, isn't it? <laughs> this Pages is another really, more job, wasn't it? Pretentious, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 ar- arrogant. So arrogant. <laughs> Good artwork design. It's called Angst. It's long. It's got There's musical seven talent on the it. album. <laughs> yeah, Fucking yeah. Pretty. There isn't seven chords in the world, is there? <laughs> this has got the probably the most labels we'd ever worked with. Oh my god! Most yeah. chords, most albums. Yeah, most they labels. must be good. They must be good though with all them record labels. They are good. really, really good. So we got to see them in Denmark, and Five Feet Under did um, like just got loads of bands off the label to play when Revenge were over, and it was it was so cool. They're intense, absolutely intense live. <laughs> They've got bits that sound different to the other bits. They got well oh, done. <laughs> Danny, are you listening to this? They got bits that sound. I, I don't get myself bit. involved in that. That's they that's do, not for they, me. They, that they play the same riff again, but instead of them singing, they have a trumpet. 
The same thing. Oh, oh I'm into that. That's, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, well up we for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how much they pay their trumpet player. <laughs> and I got to open some buttons. Thanks. Uh, uh, collapsed out of a trumpet. Where's Bobby in that? Why? Oh. I, I don't know. Yeah, ask them. See if okay. see if they're interested. I know a very I know a very good trumpet player. That? That's a Does he live in Denmark? Uh, unfortunately, not. But he will travel. Yeah, well, not at the moment. <laughs> no, obviously not. <laughs> Should we move yeah, on to, uh, yeah, we've talked about collapse um, previously, so we'll move to, move on to another band we've talked about previously. I I got my bum from family. Oh, yeah, they're boy. a great band. What's that? I've got. Oh, <laughs> another one of. Uh... Oh, very nice. Is that a... how many colours did you press it in? I think there's two. I've got two here. I got that one. But I got it on CD. I think. Did you on CD? I must have bought it off you. Yeah, it's... we've done on CD. Yeah. They're a great band. They're in another band now, isn't it? I forgot what they call it. Batwolf, yeah. Batwolf, they're great as well. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome. I mean, it, it all comes from a love of Zeke, doesn't it? Which I know you, yeah. you agree with me on this, Jim. Oh, yeah, I love them. Yeah, um, I great. think they were pretty mortified we didn't try and get them over for that um, Zeke gig in Manchester, actually. But... Oh, were they? Oh, yeah. yeah but but it would have been quite fun. Like, yeah, yeah. And the fun yeah. I'm glad you didn't, because it meant we got to play it instead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that was that was quite a good gig, that. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good gig. But yeah, like uh, Black Volvo. Um, I think it's important to say how how much of an effort Black Volvo made to get a lot of UK bands over to the Netherlands. Um, again, we've talked about this loads on previous episodes about how important it is to us that the bands are invested in the scene, invested in helping other bands and. That they proper epitomise that they really, really make an effort to get people over to the Netherlands, and um, and they also they they're always up for like getting people the Monday and Tuesday night gigs, the ones that are tricky to book, and going like we've got a small place that you know there might only be thirty people at this gig, but it's a Monday night or Tuesday night gig where people are going to dance, people are going to get involved, you'll be out have a good piss up. And that's cool, you get that in, yeah, yeah, them people yeah. are fucking angels, aren't they? Because ultimately, what else are you going to do on Monday or Tuesday? There's no other gig. So, like, yeah, 30 people is cushy, isn't it? Monday yeah, night gig, yeah. you all get together, eat food, drink beers, and play punk. It's fucking, it's not bad. Isn't it? Yeah. Those, it's, those people are. It like that, it's strange, isn't it? Why aren't Monday and Tuesday gigs more popular? It's the worst day of the week. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Shit day of work. You know what? Oh, it's got all a gig, like. Yeah, yeah. Get through the when Monday blues, young, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, I'm I'm 41 now, so I'm like older than a little bit older than the rest of you. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> loads but, older. Yeah, I was going to say older. you're quite yeah. a lot older. Yeah. <laughs> um, just don't look it. Look. Ancient. Yeah. No, you do look. <laughs> but yeah, you like when I when I was first getting into music, um, everything was so club night. Of, obsessed like you you couldn't get a decent venue for a punk gig on a, a friday or saturday there was mm-hmm. like you'd always go to gigs on mondays tuesdays wednesdays like because it was a, a night where a bar would be thinking well we might not be able to get many people in tonight let's put something <laughs> on give people a chance so there's loads of gigs on early days of the week in the past but i think that's probably got a lot to do with the scene in general getting a bit older hasn't it like you know, as soon yeah. as you stop being a student, you like think probably not going to get absolutely wanked on a Monday. <laughs> I mean, you still do it. You just think it before. You just think about it before you do you it. Think about it, yeah. Like rather than thinking I'm in a pub, that's what's going to happen. You think <laughs> I do have to go to work tomorrow. Some of us write songs about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. So it's in the middle of my. my I've done shift my work for so long arguing. now. Days mean fucking nothing to me anymore 
And then since gigs have stopped, I don't even know when weekends are anymore at all. I just I just bumble through life, and then people tell me what that is. As I go, yeah, they were, they were a good indicator. So you know, at least when if, when when there was gigs on a weekend, so you you know there's a weekend coming. Now yeah, it's, it's like, like oh, it's, I don't know where party, it is. so it's like it's probably a weekend. But like, yeah. if you do shift work, I just I just have no. And then since lockdown, since all fun has been banned, I just have no no like <laughs> clinging to a calendar. Banned fun. Like yeah, they banned fun. <laughs> Enjoying yourself has been banned since March, so like just nothing has happened since then. <laughs> no, yeah, it was fucking rubbish. Well, we'll mo- use that as a point to move on because it, this next release reminds me of a, an intense period of fun. But yeah, big shout out to Black Volvo um, for all their involvement in TNS. It's been a big part of it. So love those guys. And next up is this. Ooh, yeah, boy. Right there. <laughs> I've not kept track of which one we're doing. Yeah, it is right. It is right. TNS Tour yeah, 7 TNS inch. TNS Tour 7 inch. So we did a TNS yeah. Records tour in 2017. A big shout out to Joe Tilston from Round the Man who um, yeah, made this happen, really. Yeah, um, it was well, Revenge, Wonk Unit, Roughneck Right and Faintest Idea. And we sw- ended up being nine dates did it. And not yeah. every band played every date, but we ended up swapping a line up around each night. So you didn't know who was playing in which slot until you got to the gig, which I thought was quite an interesting thing to do. And we wanted to have a seven inch to sell on the tour as well. So this is what we put together. So it's got the like Hastings track. boat as well, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> is that from on that tour with them pictures? Yeah. No, those are from Wonkfest. Yeah. Oh, they are from one. Oh, that's in Liverpool, I think that one, and yes. and I think the ones on this the record are from Paris, but they're all Bev's photos. Did they ask you? They've got credit in that, Jim. Yeah. Did you get credit? <laughs> yeah, I made the art. Though. You don't have to. You yeah. don't have I mean, to credit. I, I know what would happen. None of us do. No, we don't have to do it. <laughs> I, I we don't have it. to bother. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> when we move on to bigger things, then maybe we'll start crediting you. <laughs> when Epitaph sign us, maybe yeah, you'll get a we, little we, thumbnail we, photo. Oh, <laughs> already planning to leave us, Jim. If we if up. we can throw you some crumbs, then we will. But yeah, minute, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> we're not gaining anything at the minute. Hey, no. credit keeps my house warm. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's. Well, Danny, what's your memories of that TNS tour? Yeah, it was a great tour. I had a great fun. And, and I think, like, it was one of them where it was a tour spread over four weekends, wasn't it? Like, long weekends, which in theory sounds shit because it's like, oh, it's not, like, one long tour. But also in the UK is the best way to do it because it was all, I think it was a mixture of either Thursday through Sunday or, like, at least Friday through Saturday night. So, like, that was the best way to do it in UK. Um, yeah, it was great fun. I do, uh, yeah. They sold out as well, didn't they? It was really nice yeah. that you could yeah. have that sort of tour. I think it was a big, uh, I think we were at Camden Underworld and I, I think a few of us had known each other for a long time. We're sort of looking at each other going, the, the, one of the guys working had just come over and said, yeah, it's, there's only like 20 tickets on the door and there's a queue. So um, basically you've sold out. <laughs> and we were like, what? Yes. Going outside Camden and Underworld. Yeah, out. fucking, yeah, it was mad. Cause like, I think we'd like, we probably knew Wonk the least, but we definitely gigged and like, you know, we knew Wonk, as like mates to sort of speak to as we cross paths and stuff, but we knew everyone else as like close mates before that anyway. And so it's just like going on tour with your mates. Like every weekend you're just hanging out with your fucking you your friends and then yeah. And then you look put Louie up as the old uh the banner as well, which is cool, my old dog. And then we had fucking yeah, it was just like a big TNS party every week. And then yeah, Underworld was probably the biggest one. And that was like, yeah, it was mad. It was just like, oh fuck. I remember like I remember first time I don't know if it was the first time we met you, but I remember like, I think it was Colwyn Bay in Wales and it was uh, like Revenge played there and beat the red light player. I think it was like 2009 or 10. We talked about that gig because that's it was like, fucking years ago anyway. But like, you know, considering what it had come from, 
And they was like, oh, fuck me. Underworld sold out. And it was just like, yeah, this is this is mad. Like, this is this is pretty good, this. Well, no one does that, do they? No, like, independent DIY bands, even a collective of bands like that, sells out the underworld. Yeah. Big bands don't sell out the underworld. Like. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, it's so crazy. you were at that gig, weren't you, Jim? Like, yeah, it was great. And like, cause who play, did Roughneck play first that night? Yeah, I think Roughneck, Roughneck were first. Us, Revenge, Wonk. I think that's right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. like Roughneck, I remember we we were drinking, and you had Roughneck come on. So I was like, let's go down and watch. And it's already like rammed in the room. Not like, oh, first band's on. We'll just drink it. Yeah, it's already yeah. everyone's in the room from start to the finish. Every band, everyone was in there watching them. Everyone knew each other. There was people, it wasn't just London people, was it? It was people from all over Britain. Yeah, all definitely. All gigs were in there. That's what I said earlier to you. And at the time, so it was my favourite gig I've ever been to. It was just great, wasn't it? Oh, everyone, you knew everyone in there. Everyone was friends. And brilliant atmosphere. Everyone had a party. No trouble or anything like that. It was just great. You don't get I've, better than that, does we, it? Well, we've done, you know, like you said there... Work. We've we've done like underworld gigs and that supporting bigger bands have been the first band on and like there's fuck all you know some people are watching but it's like and fair play like you know when you're at the bigger gigs and that like you know people don't watch first bands but like the TNS tour everyone was there for everything do you know what I mean so yeah. it was like the first band on it really didn't mean anything the order wasn't really that important everyone was just there for a good time for everyone and like yeah yeah it was just it was. That's the kind of the yeah. idea behind the not announcing it till the day kind of thing. It's like, yeah, like, drives that message home. Just like, go and watch everyone, support everyone. It doesn't matter who's on first. I think a big thing for us about the TNS tour was um, our ethos from day one's been very much like, you don't come to um, to watch one band, you come to support the scene, the the event. Um, it's the whole thing. We've actually it? been at a point where like someone's turned up just before the last band and said, um, I want to get in cheaper. And we've gone, well, mm. that actually goes completely against our ethos. We're not... go against any punk's ethos, yeah. shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think, like, the TNS tour, seeing that that ethos was very much embodied by the people who were going to the gigs was was pretty big for us. Like, like you, you know, like, so... The, the Underworld was probably the most special gig of the tour because it's such an iconic venue and to sell that out was incredible. But... Like I, I grew up in Stafford, and Stafford, we. That put was a on, good gig as well. I remember Stafford. Yeah. yeah. Well, we put on gigs when we were kids, and you used to be able to get people to go on a Tuesday night. Going back to what we were talking about before, like because there was nothing else to do, and people would go out on a Tuesday. But that gig couldn't start until ten, because um, it was a restaurant underneath it and or above <laughs> it. But yeah, it was in the same building as a restaurant. No sound checks then. No, 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 no noise. <laughs> so, you know, well, you had your sound check at like five and then... Oh, and then, that, then it opened. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then and there was just a massive queue of people to get in. It sold 180 tickets in Stafford. I was thinking, wow, this is... You know, the TNS tour sold 180 tickets in Stafford. This is that, yeah. ridiculous. And um, and because it was like, so obviously some of my family came and stuff. And on a, I'd like to give a big shout out to Neil, who passed recently. Who, who oh, um, yeah. Settled, yeah, yeah, bless Neil. Top, um, set up that venue awesome. and then Red Rum afterwards. But I just thought this, there's people at this gig who I'd known from being a kid who'd like seen the start of my journey before I got to any of this. And like, it was yeah, just... Neil, really Neil cool. worked fucking hard, to be fair, like... Red Rum was fucking awesome as well. Like we played there a couple of times, and like, yeah, that 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 day at the TNS tour was wicked. And then Neil Neil worked his ass off in Stafford and built something as well. Like in the same way they did with Hastings. Like there was there was a scene in Stafford because of basically because of Neil because he kept yeah, it going and he, built yeah. a venue, didn't it? He put well, it, that, he built it, and they came <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. Like people were traveling from uh, Brom and Wolverhampton and yeah. stuff. And yeah, that, yeah. Stafford was the place you would go. Um, and, yeah. that, and it will be again because they're carrying on Red Rum. It yeah, will they're be not shutting it, are they? Yeah, yeah bless. Great, yeah. Good up. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's put a lot of work in there. That's good, isn't it? They're going to carry it on, not let it just fall by the wayside now because he wouldn't have wanted that, would he? No. Because he loved and it, like, booking all these gigs and bands. Fair play, like it was mainly Neil, but they had a good team behind them that are obviously carrying it on. And like, fair play, like that's fucking good. It's yeah. so amazing for me to see like the place I grew up, which. Um, you know, always had people who were up for going to a gig, but never had a proper punk scene where you'd 
you go and see like actual i mean i went to see clowns and voodoo glow schools two nights in a row on a monday and a tuesday in stafford <laughs> great that <laughs> he's going on the clowns and voodoo glow schools are playing in stafford on yeah 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 <laughs> yeah it's like you're getting like head planet earth and stuff playing in there so yeah, yeah. Like, getting ridiculous <laughs> fucking <sort. laughs> So yeah, check on my kid. You right, kids? Move on to the last one. Been very good. On the, yeah, last one of this episode. I don't know it's if it's blue for me because it's got dark during this and I haven't got my glasses. I can't on, see. So yeah, I can't see. Cool. That looks like Cypress yeah. Hill. Yeah, it, it does Sunday. look Black Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I remember we that album that. coming out. Yeah. Um, TNS 60 and a lot had changed. We released an album for Cypress Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just so no, we're done with America. We've decided to come to yeah, the north of England. Just loads of UK DIY punk bands, but with Sand Dog <laughs> repeating the choruses after it. Like, <laughs> yes, Chicky Pop Brave Form. Great. You should ask them to do that for TNS 101, shouldn't you? That <laughs> Sand Dog to just do backing vocals on loads of on those punk bands' albums. Like. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> I'm going to ruin, ruin Christmas, although by the time this goes online, it won't be Christmas. It is Christmas now. But uh, it's not Cypress Hill, it's throwing stuff. Oh, great. Great band. Great band. Great band. Great I'm pretty band. sure Send Dog isn't in them, but like, great Send Dog's not in them. Yeah. A Dog is in them. <laughs> Kieran Kelly. <laughs> the K Dog. They're great. I think. I mean, I, I thought I they don't broke know. up, but I've seen them not long ago play again in Bristol. Well, They're Benny's still amazing. Broad, hasn't he? So I don't think they oh, can that's play it. Very often. It's just when he comes back, they do a little. They do, yeah. I think it was yeah. with Incisions they did a tour, and we went over and watched them. They're great. They are. So I think one of the things I wanted to say about the Throne stuff releases. So one of the reasons we set up MPF is because there was a lot going on in Manchester, but sometimes the scenes didn't connect as well as they could do. And we set up MPF, and. Um, like Kieran was putting on all the moving north stuff, Tree and Tom and Danny were putting on all the AU stuff. And we kind of bought those scenes together as best as we could. And um I remember thinking about throwing stuff, seeing them live and stuff, and thinking they absolutely work on a TNS gig. They work with Revenge or Pizza Tram or Incisions, or <laughs> they work with those sort of fast, thrashy bands, but they were playing a lot of gigs where they weren't necessarily playing with those sorts of bands. And I thought it was really I think this release was a real sort of nod to the success of MPF combining some scenes together, really. I thought, um, like, loads of our crowd really absolutely loved this album, and they might not have seen them at the gigs they were going to. So I thought that was mm. that was really important. I think, yeah, first off, great. I think it's definitely every... one of those albums you hear and you go, well, we've got to put this out. <laughs> we might not necessarily cover our costs fully, but oh, that's great. I really want it's this album. Full this. throttle, like, I mean. yeah, in it. Like every time I've seen them, they've been fucking brilliant. It's yeah, just I'd never, it was, it? I think it was before, like, we even met you. Like, it, be, it would have been before we played you, I think. And like, the, it was the you know the Bannies, the Australian band, and they like, yeah. like oh, yeah. band. <laughs> and like they were playing Cardiff, so we got asked to like go on first and throw in stuff. They they were on the tour. I take it a tour support, but I listened to the Bannies like, on the internet. I was like, oh yeah, they're cool. But they don't say anything like that. So we played. I'm like, well, this is easy. We play fast. Is it when there's slower bands after you? It's all right, isn't it? And then throw in stuff. Come on. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, who are these? Like, they were amazing. <laughs> and afterwards, I was like, who are you? Where do you come from? Oh, from Manchester. I think that was just before we played for Revenge. And I was like, they blew my brains out of my head. I'm like, well, who are you? I thought you were going to be some, thought you were like an Australian stoner band, like, and then <laughs> Manchester dudes going absolutely ape shit on stage. Oh, they were great. Well, they weren't even on stage, I don't think, of that gig. They were in the middle of the crowd. Yeah, so, sorry, I got carried away then. No, they're great. Going back to the, the novelty things to sell albums, um, I think you know, that, that logo, I ended up spray painting that because it's a one sided release. This was so it's only like, um, because it's so short. The way like, all good like releases should be. Yeah, yeah. I, I spray painted that onto the back of a load, like records, but I haven't, 
I think I just did it on so, for ten pre-orders, so I don't think I've got a copy. No, I've got it. It's have you got it? So, so hang yeah. on, you did what on other ra- releases? You spray painted it on the back, yeah. Well, I think I ended up painted it on the back. Oh, great! The spray paint wouldn't catch or keep or something. Yeah, it looks like acrylic paint. Yeah, acrylic paint just. Did that? That took forever as well. Damaging record players <laughs> since 2016. Well, it's, it's not on the. There's no grooves on that side. No, I suppose you are saying, yeah. But, I got um, the Soul Glow um, EP recently, who were amazing. You should check them out. But um, the who? Soul Glow, and um, it's screen printed on the oh, other side no. of the record, and it's so yeah. warped because it's been screen printed on. It's well, do you crazy. like that record? Do you? I've listened to that. I didn't. I didn't like it. That much. American band. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to that. It was a bit, well, it's got a lot of hip hop bits in it and then like mega yeah. frenetic. But yeah, I want that first. I, I thought it was all right. I'm listening to it again. They've said it's good. <laughs> it's in my van. Which well, we don't have to like the same things. things. No, I know. I know that. But we got quite similar taste in music. Yeah. And I listened for, oh, that's not my, not my cup of tea. I might have to give it another go. Oh, I'll give it another go. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it another throwing, go. Throwing stuff we released a seven inch before this, haven't they? they, they Kieran did it as uh, moving north. Yeah, Anything I've got that on the shelf over there, but the pile of seven inches over there, I'm not digging through it. It's loosely. Is, is that the only full length throwing stuff then? Is it? Yeah. Least, yeah. yeah. They did a, a split with Boston Manor, who are now massive. Massive. Yeah, yeah. and it's sought after that split, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll sell mine. I don't ever need to buy something. Yeah. Get on it. Yeah, stick it on eBay. But yeah, it was it was really nice because obviously we got to know Kieran really well from doing MPF. Um, and yeah, like it worked really well as a release. And I thought um, a lot of people who are into TNS stuff who wouldn't have necessarily come across throwing stuff really fell in love with it. And then hopefully vice versa, like some of the people who went to watch throwing stuff maybe checked out. Well, I know that happened. I know like people I've met who've said, oh, I didn't really go to TNS gigs until the throwing stuff album. So, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Cool, that's, so you want a band to like pull them in and then discover the rest of the bands and the, and the scene. And the record label then, obviously, isn't it? Well, I bet you get what... loads of people when you're packaging stuff where it's the same address, whatever you release, you're like, oh, they always buy stuff. You know what I mean? And you can see the people who buy it all. And like, oh, we've got, even if they might not hear the band, they might not even like that, what release it is that much, we'll buy it to support you, I suppose. Like, and yeah, that's, that's what, what we want hope. people to do. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> buy them all. Like, yeah. That's what you hope your record label is. You hope people trust you as a record label and then use that as a kind of a a way Stepping into stone. yeah, yeah, yeah. So into new bands and that, I think that's why we quite like being quite diverse as well as in it's not necessarily the same kind of sound all the time but then it's also we hope that everything's kind of got the same kind of approach to it and there is kind of a thread that ties all the bands together well there is like all the bands you've released they could all play happily on a gig with each other couldn't they and it, yeah. no one yeah. would like stand out like a sore thumb right I Except think, the know, ones me mix, and Danny were slacking off earlier collapse. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wait and see. I think it's interesting <laughs> that though, because um, um, at the very start of TNS, we were talking about how there was a lot of gigs that happened where they were paid to play and it'd be an indie band, a metal band, um, a punk band. And you'd think, well, that doesn't work as a lineup. And then there'd be a group of people who come in to watch the indie band and then they'd fuck off. And then, oh, group... yeah, all that and then well, the pay to play gigs but, always like that. Isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, you think, yeah. like, well, you criticise that for being too much of a mix in terms of styles. But at the same time, the real strength of TNS for me is that you can have loads of bands that sound very different on a gig. And and, and it brings it back to the whole idea that the ethos is what binds it together, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah well, the pay-to-play thing, obviously you're anti-pay, well, that, that straight away, that you're screwed at them, isn't it? They, that's just some promoter trying to make money. They, no one gives a shit. Of course, you yeah. go and watch your mate's band, then you go, and that is it, like, isn't it? Whereas yeah, yeah. to get you like you could put on a load of bands, and even if people haven't heard them, not what well, TNS putting all these bands on, they're probably gonna like them. They're gonna be some sort of punk music, aren't they? And then they're gonna watch them all, aren't they? Yeah, I don't know if that made sense. Then I sort of no, like absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Calling my eye and not lost you're track of what of, I was doing. You're kind of hoping that people trust. I guess that's what a label is, isn't it? Or a collective of any sort. You're hoping that people put a bit of trust in the group of people who've put that together is taste and think, yeah. well, I, I like a lot of the other stuff. So hopefully I'll like this. It's all under one umbrella, isn't it? It's just like you trust that umbrella and you go, well, 
even if it's not the exact same thing, I reckon I'm going to give it a go and see how I get on with it. Yeah, yeah. well, you think like uh, pre-internet, and it was like well, I was on about epitaph early, but that's because they well, the yeah. main, when you're a teenager, if, before you having the internet, you'd have a rancid arm on epitaph and a no effects arm on epitaph. You go in your local music shop and you see a new release in the punk and it says epitaph on it. It don't matter if you know you've heard, it or, you heard the band or not. You're like, well, I'll buy that yeah, because yeah. you know the chances are that you're going to like it, isn't it? And it just yeah, that's the way it works, isn't it? It's like the, st- the stamp of approval on it already, like, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Nintendo that. used to do on their games. Sorry, <laughs> what are you two eating there? Sorry, I'm getting I distracted. That's the perfect way to end, really. Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. What are you eating? Well, I'll Thank make dinner in a minute. Thank, Thank you very much, <laughs> Danny and Jim, for joining us. Danny. Like, we're really good. Uh, no problem. I will be taking it out with the, with all of you if when I cook dinner for my children, there they don't eat it because. For the last hour, the reason they've been so quiet is because they're sat on the sofa eating loads of sweets. Do you want to come say goodbye, Miles? Right then. Over I'll see you all eating? at some point soon. Yeah, nice. All right, I'll let you all go. Bye. Say bye to Danny. There's Danny by there. Say bye, Danny. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, Andy. Bye, bye Bev. <laughs>